I'm Chan Storland, and this is the Spurs Insider, our weekly NBA podcast from ExpressNews.com. And I'm joined now by San Antonio Express News sports writer Jeff McDonald. Great as always to have you here, Jeff. A uh, special episode today. Manu Ginobili obviously just had that jersey retirement ceremony. Let's get right to it. How did it go down? What stood out from that celebration? Obviously, um, up in the rafters, there are some other recent jerseys that have been uh, put up there. And of course, um, there was a face there last night who will have a jersey up there soon. Yeah, it was just a wonderful night. I mean, I'm still a little um, uh, bleary eyed from it this morning because it was just a um, uh, it was an emotional night, a very good crowd, lots of good energy there, which you would expect. You're talking about. Uh, Mata Ginobili, who is one of the, uh, not one of the, he is probably the most beloved Spurs player of all time. Um, you know, even up there with Tim Duncan and David Robinson and guys that are, um, you know, on, on the Mount Rushmore of, of the NBA. Um, Ginobili just connected with this fan base in a way that uh, probably no other player does. And a lot of it was just the way he played, just kind of, uh, you know, like with his hair on fire, um, never say die, take no prisoners, never take a playoff. Uh, part of it was his um, uh, Hispanic heritage. You know, he could he could talk to uh, the fans in this city, in San Antonio, a lot of them in their own language, which is something that they've never had before. And, and you know, it was just the success that, that came with him, him and, and Duncan and, and Tony Parker together, um, you know, Giving turning the Spurs into something uh, in in our quote unquote little town. I mean, I know there's a million people here, but by NBA standards, we were a small market. Um, it gave us, it, it made the Spurs, the little old San Antonio Spurs, kind of the gold standard of the NBA for such a long time. And and all that uh, love and appreciation was kind of full bore last night from from the fans and then from um, you know the various speakers at the ceremony, Tim, Tony, Manu. Uh, Fabricio Berto, who played with uh, Manu in Argentina and with the Spurs, and of course Greg Popovich. And I think what fans like the most about the that um, kind of setup, that kind of ceremony, is sort of the uh, behind the scenes stuff that the, the, the little anecdotes that the, the players share about each other and about um, you know the the man of honor. It's kind of like part roast, part celebration, and last night was also kind of part big three reunion because the first time. Uh, Duncan Ginobili and Manu uh, and uh, Parker had really been together in a while in the same bu- building. You know, Tony's out there in Charlotte playing. Manu's been to a couple of games. Tim is kind of not around as much as far as the games are concerned. And there was a moment like in the second half of the, the actual basketball game that was played last night, Spurs against Cleveland, where on the big screen they showed, you know, kind of the general manager's box, which is kind of in, in the stands. Um, and there was Tim, Tony, and Manu sitting side by side um, watching the game together. And I think that was sort of a poignant moment even before um, the actual ceremony began. And uh, Manu became the ninth player in Spurs history to have his jersey retire. And I think I don't think it will surprise anybody to learn. I mean, this hasn't been announced, but it's just going to happen. Uh, the tenth player will be Tony Parker, and that will be another night uh, like um, – we had last night and it'll be kind of an interesting sort of dynamic when you can look up at the AT&T center Raptors and see the whole collected set there 21 for Duncan 20 for Manu Ginobili and number nine for Tony Parker. I think that might be when the finality of the era finally hits home when you see all three of those up there. But as far as last night was concerned, I mean, it was, it was a great celebration of um, a player that, means so much to the city and so much to this fan base and it was well deserved and uh just a great night yeah speaking of uh who's up next tony parker cannot escape his spurs roots i mean he he even flew back on the team plane correct that is correct because it just so happened the spurs won charlotte um right before they came home for this for the ceremony and uh yeah tony hitched a ride on the team plane and that was that was just kind of a fun little thing uh i think pop joked you know we just put him in the back he doesn't get his seat back up front um we just put him in the back of the plane but yeah tony came in uh i thought this at the tim duncan retirement ceremony a couple years ago tony's really good at that uh the speaking part of that he's probably to me the best performer of the guys that speak he's real polished and has uh kind of a uh a rap 
that he wants to not a rap like a song, but like a you know what he wants to say down. He's got the stories down. He wants to tell. He's got the punchlines down that he wants to tell. He talked last night about how early in their career, all of Argentina wanted to uh, wanted to kill him because they thought he wouldn't pass the ball to Ginobili, and he he kind of wanted to set the record straight straight and blame Pop for that because Pop's the one that calls the plays. Um, it was just he's he's a, he's uh, he's like the uh, Jeffrey Ross of uh, Spurs retirement ceremonies. He's like the the roast master general of those things. He's really good at it. Wow, that's high praise. We'll have to get that word to Jeffrey Ross. Let him know he's been compared to Tony Parker. So, uh, yeah, it was a, a victory last night. Um, nice ending there. Obviously, that's important for a Manu Ginobili retirement ceremony. But, of course, looking forward to the playoffs, uh, a win is a win. So the Spurs, they can clinch a berth with one more victory or one more Sacramento loss. So, basically, postseason is almost assured that uh, that streak is almost assured to continue. Uh, what's the best draw for the Spurs, do you think, in the first round? And how do they go about lining that up? Um, yeah, it's going to be a, we're kind of looking at the Spurs are going to obviously be at the bottom of the playoff bracket. They're not going to have home court advantage in the first round. Um, you look at the teams that they could possibly match up with. I mean, it kind of looks like the Spurs are going to fall in that seven or eight hole. They could get up to sixth, maybe fifth, but for, for the sake of argument, if we're talking seven or eight. Um, if, if I, you know, I think if you're a Spurs fan and you want to see the deepest playoff run possible, um, you would hope they could somehow line up a matchup with Denver, who right now is in second. Um, I think Golden State, who the Spurs, who's knocked the Spurs out of the playoffs for, for two straight seasons already. I mean, I think that's just sort of a uh, death wish, kind of a suicide mission if they end up uh, with Golden State. The, the trouble is going to be you don't know who's going to end up number one or number two. Like Golden State and uh, Denver are sort of flip-flopping that spot around. And um, so it's it, – hard to sort of say okay we need to make a big push for seventh so we can finish second uh, finish so we can play denver who's going to finish second because you could do all that and then golden state finishes second or, or vice versa hey if we stay in eighth um you know maybe we can match up with denver and then denver finishes second instead of first and you end up with golden state again so i guess it's really not going to make a whole lot of sense to sort of try to organize that i think you just have to play the games it is going to be interesting because the spurs do have one head-to-head matchup with Denver left on the schedule. It's the only game they have left against a team that's over 500. It's also on the second night of a back-to-back. They play Atlanta here the night before, have to fly to Denver. I think Denver's coming in from uh, the West Coast. will also be on a back-to-back. But, you know, in that game, you might have a chance to, um, you know, decide whether it makes sense for Denver to, to win a game or lose a game, if that helps you or hurts you. You know, it'll – you can rest some guys, you cannot rest some guys, that sort of thing. But overall, I think if you could just, if you got to pick your opponent out of the possible, um, uh, you know, the possibilities, I think Denver is who you want. And even that said, I like Denver a lot. I think they're a very good team. I just think they're, they're the best of a uh, bad set of options for a Spurs team that's going to be coming off the bottom part of the, of the playoff bracket. But they are going to make the playoffs for the 22nd, 22nd straight season like I uh, you know I think that's pretty much assured as you mentioned um they they uh actually have Sacramento coming in here on Sunday so if Sacramento doesn't lose if Sacramento loses Saturday in Houston the Spurs are in if Sacramento somehow upsets Houston the Spurs will have a chance to sort of take care of business on their own on um Sunday Sunday evening so they're gonna they're gonna make it it's just a matter of uh how far can they go once they get there and I think Denver gives them the best option, although clearly nothing is assured when you're coming from the seven or eight hole. So as you mentioned, um, there won't be any home advantage that first round of the postseason. Uh, And the Spurs have consistently played poor on the road, uh, especially on defense. What's that going to look like once the playoffs start? I assume that might be when you look back, if the Spurs bow out in the first round, they're like, well, there it was. That was why. Yeah, yeah, that's they never have really figured out this thing on the road. And I don't know. Um, I, mean, I can tell you the coaches are as perplexed about it as anybody else because it's just a different team that shows up when you get off that plane. It, I mean, just just it's not the same. Uh, consistently, it's not the same fiber, same same 
guts that, that you see when the team plays at home. I mean, if you look at and, and defensively is where that shows up the most. Um, you know, if you if you look at just their home, how they play defense at home, um, they're giving up about 104 points, no, 106 points for 100 possessions. That's sort of how you measure defense, defensive rating. Um, if they could do that over the course of all the games and be in that area, they'd have a, a fifth best defense in the NBA. Um, but they do not because their road defense is just so shoddy. I think they're like 26th in the league in, in road defense. And that's really a problem uh, when you're looking at a playoff run where you're probably not going to have home court advantage in any round. And, you know, you know, so in order to advance, it's necessary. I mean, you can't advance without winning at least one road game in each series. And that's hard to do when you can't end on the road. And I don't, at this point, I don't know what you do to clean that up. I don't know how, what you do to improve. And, and so, yeah, I think you're right. When the Spurs finally do get bounced, whatever round that is, first, second, third, whatever, it's going to be because they just, they just can't seem to find a way um, to defend on the road. And I, it seems like a bummer of a note to leave it on. You know, they can't defend on the road and there's no hope. So they're going to lose in the playoffs, but that's kind of, that's kind of where we are right now. They haven't shown it yet. And it seems at this point of the season, it's hard to think that they will. Like you've either got it at this point or you don't. Well, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff McDonald's calling it no NBA championships for the Spurs this (laughs) season. Uh, I like how you put it when they get bounced out of the playoffs or however you phrase that, that was basically the meaning there. Um, And I can see why, why you would say that looking at this season, you know, it's great that they can continue most likely, you know, 99% likely that they're going to continue with that postseason streak. And, you know, there've been ups and downs this season. And obviously it all kind of stems from what happened last season and the player who shall not be named right now. But, but it's interesting because all that being the case this season, you still have this DeMar DeRozan, LaMarcus Aldridge, they're on, pace to become the first set of Spurs to average at least 20 points in the same season since 1997-98 with David Robinson and Tim Duncan. Um, So that begs the question, is this concentration of scoring at the top, is this a good thing, a bad thing, or is it just a thing? Is it not good or bad? Yeah, I think it's just a thing maybe. I mean, it's just sort of how they're built and how this team is constructed. And it's, you know, I I think it's a, it's a, flawed team in a lot of ways that was kind of put together uh not on the fly but this is not the this was not the five-year plan was to have this team it was to have the player you didn't name earlier Kawhi Leonard um running the show so in a lot of ways it's sort of an accomplishment that this team is even uh you know in position to make that playoff streak continue and um you know for a while there still had a decent chance at 50 wins, which would have been phenomenal. I mean, if they get to 48 or 49 um, with the hand they were dealt, um, that's still a good year. And a lot of it has to do with what they've been able to do offensively. And a lot of what they've had to been able to do offensively has been due to LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan uh, sort of figuring out how to coexist with each other because they're, they're, they're two different sort of players. They're two players that need the ball in their hands. Um, you know, DeRozan has done a good job of turning himself into also a facilitator. So on top of his uh, 21 plus points per game, he's also giving you about six assists a game, which is a career high um, in that category. And, but, but yeah, the Spurs have usually been more egalitarian than this in in the scoring department. I mean, the year they won the the last year, they won the finals in 2014, their leading score was Tony Parker at 16 points a game, which was like, it was like the lowest, scoring leading score on a championship team since like the fifties or something like we're so everything was so uh, spread out for them. This team really is, is it's LaMarcus and DeMar. And if you can get a third guy in there to, to kind of have a really good night, then you have a chance um, to win the game. But yeah, we haven't seen two players score like this for the Spurs in a long, long time. That was Tim Duncan's rookie year that that happened. Um, And then for most of Duncan's career, it was either, him scoring 20 points a game, or it was then for a while, maybe one season in there, it was Ginobili with 20 points a game. Then a little while later, it was uh, Tony Parker with 20 points a game, but never never together. Um, and then really since Kawhi Leonard came, it was really kind of kind of a one, uh, you know, one leading score, uh, like, a, like a one head of the snake kind of thing for the Spurs offense, offensively. And um, this year, you've kind of got a two-headed snake, so, so to speak. And, 
theoretically, when it's all working well, you know, it's, it should make this person more difficult to guard because you've got two all-star caliber scorers coming at you. Uh, and when one guy's off, the other guy can pick up. Like last night against Cleveland, like Lamarcus finally got together a little bit, but but was kind of struggling. But then DeRozan was the guy that picked them up, um, you know, in the third quarter when they were down by 11 points and looked like Manu Knight was going to be completely ruined by a loss to uh, a pretty dreadful Cleveland team. DeRozan's the guy that picked them up. Um, there have been other games where it's been the other way around where DeRozan can't hit the broad side of the barn. And Aldridge is the guy picking him. I mean, we're we're not even a week removed from him scoring 48 points in Boston, uh, Lamarcus. Um, but when they're both when they're both firing at all cylinders, it is sort of a sight to behold. It's fun, and it'll also be fun. Like I don't think either one of these players cares about it, but which one ends up being the team? You know, being the team's scoring leader at the end of the season because it's right neck and neck. I think Demar's Demar's led it from the beginning, but I think they're within like. 0.2 or 0.4 points of each other. Um, not a lot of games left to make up that difference, but it's a fun little side battle to watch between two really, really good NBA scorers, um, you know, kind of put up those numbers on a nightly basis. All right, Jeff, wrapping things up. Final thoughts. What's important to uh, pay attention to in the next uh, few days, coming weeks? I mean, you want to, you just want to see some sharpness from these last stretch of games going to the playoffs you want to you want to see some consistency you know you really you really thought in boston uh, uh last sunday they played one of their best road games of the season you know maybe that's a corner they turned um then they lost the next game in charlotte to a team charlotte team that's maybe going to make the playoffs but isn't all that good um so you want to see just some sharpness on both ends of the floor you want to see the stakes getting cleaned up uh, and you want to see cons- some consistency game in, game game out um, as, as you build towards the playoffs because those are coming right around the corner. I mean, it's going to be April uh, pretty, pretty, pretty soon in a couple of days, and that's playoff time. And thank you to San Antonio Express News sports writer Jeff McDonald for joining me for today's episode of the Spurs Insider, our weekly NBA podcast from ExpressNews.com. For the San Antonio Express News, I'm Chance Dorland.